Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and quick question. How many continents do you know? How many continents are there on the planet? Depending on when you were raised and also depending on where you're from, you'll probably give a different answer. Simply because certain continents might be connected and are seen as one, like for example South and North America. And in certain countries, continents like Europe and Asia are actually considered to be one as well, Eurasia. But overall, scientifically speaking, we believe there to be seven different continents. Or at least we used to. Now there seems to be another one we just discovered that was hiding under the ocean. Let's talk about this and welcome to the Math. So just a kind of a review, what are those seven continents? We have North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, the Australian or Oceanian continent, and of course Antarctica. There is no true definition to what makes a continent, a lot of it has to do with the actual plate tectonics and just the idea of having really really large mass of land. But generally speaking, continents and their definition have been sort of more or less the same for the past few decades and technically even hundreds of years. You know, if you look around YouTube, for example, you'll discover all of these uh, songs for kids that teach them continents, and it's always seven continents. And this is obviously also something I learned in school as well. But it looks like we're going to be redefining our future textbooks, because in the last few years since the original discovery in 2017, the scientists have been trying to actively map this mysterious continent known as Zealandia. And they did an incredible job in the last three years, defining exactly what it may have looked like in the past, and most importantly, officially establishing the eighth continent on the planet, Zealandia. Now, as the name implies, it's where New Zealand is located. But New Zealand represents only a tiny, tiny part of this continent, because for the most part, most of it is underwater. And I was actually trying to see what we used to think was there in this location, because we have these maps that um, try to recreate Earth as it was a few million years ago. And here, the most accurate representation of ancient Earth comes from this amazing simulation made by Ian Webster. And here, if you look at what we thought this location looked like, it was kind of like this. It was very similar to what we have today. So we didn't really think that this continent existed until very recently. In other words, this part right here that you see, that's Zealandia. But we thought it was always underwater. We didn't actually think that it was ever above the water. However, all of the new studies coming from this region confirm that this is basically the sunken continent. And in before someone says this is the lost Atlantis, it's not. It has nothing to do with the lost continents, it has nothing to do with human civilizations of the past. This is truly way, way before humans as a species even existed. This is technically when we were still a lot more similar to other apes than to actual humans. So this is approximately 28 to possibly 35 million years ago. Or approximately 30 million years after the asteroid that, um, well, killed the dinosaurs. And the current chronology for what may have happened goes as follows. So, about 240 million years ago, there was this really, really massive supercontinent known as Pangaea. It was basically an entire Earth as a single continent. And on the other side, you would find a really, really large ocean. But at some point, plate tectonics started to act up again, and a lot of these continents started to isolate from one another and separate into bigger pieces. Some of these larger pieces started to slowly move away from one another and form the more familiar shapes we know today. The massive Pangaea first split into two large parts. The one to the north was known as Laurasia, that eventually became Europe and Asia, and the one to the south became Gondwana land. And within about 100 million years, these parts started splitting as well. Approximately 80 million years ago, most of the pieces in the Gondwana started to break apart and created a lot of other continents, including Africa, a smaller continent of India that you see right here, and of course Australia and Zealandia that is not unfortunately shown here. And it most likely looked something like this. This existed for at least 60 million years as a separate continental mass and moved very close to Australia for most of its lifetime. But then approximately 23 million years ago, something happened and it started to be submerged underwater. And today, about 94% of the entire land of Zealandia is under the ocean, very close to Australia and New Zealand. 
And so if it wasn't for the oceans and for the water that's covering it, it would have been recognized as a continent a long time ago. Now let's try to examine this on Google Earth here because it will make a little bit more sense if we look at it from the top here. Here's Australia and Zealandia represents about half the size of the Australian continent. The northern part of Zealandia is this right here. This is the area known as New Caledonia. New Zealand, on the other hand, represents the southern part, or most of the southern parts here, and you can even see the outlines of this sunken continent right here on the map. And it's also very, very likely that most of this continent was actually not covered by the water during the so-called interglacial period. During the interglacial periods on the planet, the water levels fall because a lot of it becomes ice, and this is actually when a lot of the human uh, inhabitants were able to walk across, for example, the areas right here from the uh, Europe to North America during the early North America migration approximately 15,000 years ago. So 15,000 years ago, it's quite possible that a large part of Zealandia was also available for humans to settle. Although we're not entirely sure if there were any humans living there because we think that the first arrivals to New Zealand and to this region happened a few thousand years after the ice subsided and was done by a sea traveling Polynesian civilization that most likely originated from Taiwan. So currently there is no proof and no reason to believe that any humans lived on Zealandia in the past. Nevertheless, this whole area is filled with a lot of really rich gas fields, a lot of fisheries, and a lot of oil as well. So at this point, it's also kind of politically important to establish who and what all of this belongs to. Because technically, if New Zealand is part of Zealandia, as is New Caledonia, this will make it somewhat politically ambiguous in terms of the exploitation of the actual oil fields and fisheries. But there are also a lot of important scientific questions this helps us answer as well, specifically in terms of the migration of different animal species across this region. For example, this might eventually explain how certain animals were able to cross the oceans and move across these different islands that are present here. At the same time, it will explain why certain species didn't really change very much in the last few million years, because the continent is now covered by water entirely. And although this continent was originally confirmed back in 2017, now we actually have a very detailed map of it, and most importantly, you can now go and virtually explore this entire continent with a lot of detail, including seeing the volcanoes that are present there, most of them of course underwater, and a lot of other geological formations, all of which have been mapped in the last few years. And all of this is available from the website known as GNS Science, which is run by the government of New Zealand and has a lot of information on the site as well. Now, all of this right now is still in the so-called early discovery stage because I'm sure a lot more things will be discovered about this new continent in the future. But the idea behind this discovery is not just the fact that we are going to have to learn one more continent in school. It's also related to the political and economic boundaries that have been established in the last few years. Because this is now officially a continent, and because New Zealand and New Caledonia are technically the biggest representatives here, this makes it uh, very beneficial for both of these countries in the future, especially as new laws are formed and new boundaries are established, making New Zealand possibly one of the few countries in the world that are going to have this incredibly large piece of underwater land available for their exploitation and also obviously research and other economic endeavors. In other words, this discovery is not just geologic, scientific or historical. It's also extremely important economically speaking. And for New Zealand, it might actually bring a lot of new opportunities in the future. And although I guess you don't really hear me say this very often, this will also rewrite the future textbooks. Now we have eight continents. And welcome Zealandia. It's really nice to know you. Hopefully we'll get to explore you in the next few years. But I guess until we learn more about Zealandia or until we discover something else incredible here, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye!